All right, we're in the car. Uh, good afternoon, Omar. Hey. Chuck what? Cook's first Waymo ride. That's right. And uh, here we go. Start ride. So, your first time in a driverless car, how does it feel? That was a good aggressive, uh, we used a nice jerk curve to get off there. That was yeah. confident. I mean, it, it obviously took a little bit for it to get to us, but that was interesting just to watch how it, how it um, actually tried to get to us. Oh, please buckle your seatbelt. Mine's buckled. Oh, really? Yeah. Please buckle your seatbelt. Is that talking Everyone to is buckled. For rider support may call the car. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm buckled. Now. I'm buckled. Oh, yeah, I'm buckled. buckled. I don't know. The driver's buckled. buckled. <laughs> yeah, even the invisible driver's buckled. I don't know, so we got some indicators here. It's in auto, so I guess what, what So yeah, they do have a little bit of a visualization there. Yeah. Which is nice. Cruise doesn't have a visualization. Okay, so look at this. They're turning left. There's a ton of pedestrians crossing in the crosswalk. Yeah. Another person entering, and yeah. It never even stopped. That they was did smooth. a really good angle on that. Yeah, it ne that, was that was smooth. Yeah. And look at the wheels kind of jerking a little bit. It's kind of interesting, its movements. Yeah, that's kind of what it looked like it was doing as it was approaching uh, yeah. kind of to come pick us up. Um, so we got charged, I guess charged up about halfway, looks like it's got about a hundred miles. This Waymo has 50,000 miles on it, it looks like, 49,296. Oh wow, they've really been putting it through its spaces. Yeah. Um, we saw a couple of uh, Waymos on the way from the airport that had test drivers in them on the highway, so obviously it looks like they're working on a broader area. So it's got a blinker on. I don't know why. I don't, yeah, it just turned it off because we're definitely going straight on this map. Yeah, see how it's got the blinker on again? Is it trying to change lanes? It's got some identified, it looks like it wants to get in that middle lane, doesn't it? Yeah. And I it's identified these do. cars here with that little green halo. Yeah, very similar to FSD mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Like it does with the blue. I have to say, you know, driving FSD, I kind of enjoy having this screen, mm -hmm. but I don't think anyone that didn't do this would understand what all these indicators are probably telling it. Right. Maybe the blinker is obvious, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. You know, uh, like, you know, like right now, FSD would be saying, you know, changing lanes for getting, you know, it kind of gives us a little bit of an indicator, but... Sometimes you know. it does speak out what it's doing. Especially yeah. if it's slowing, it'll explain why it's slowing or yeah. stopping. Yeah. There's a lot of cool things they've done. A lot of cool design touches they've put in this that I think um, they, can be helpful for Tesla. Inside too. the car, you don't really feel like you're all censored up like you do yeah. when you look at the car from the outside. You of know, course not. Yeah. The, the outside has got all of these sensors on it, but inside, right. it just feels, it like, feels a like a small, car. small little. Yeah. Like an Uber, you know, the condition. Oh, it's a lot bigger than the Cruise. The Cruise is tiny. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. It's like a little Chevy Bolt. He's still got his blinker on, trying to fight his way over. Yeah. And I keep calling Poor it. Poor guy. A, keep calling it a he, too. No, no, oh, I, oh, there's another car. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we yeah. call an adversarial environment. Yeah. But it did it. Yeah. Now it's happy in the middle lane. Behind a Tesla. A there's, a lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Uh, and honestly, I don't, I don't do a lot of city driving probably like you do. This is probably the best lane to be in yeah. if you're going straight for a while because stop cars on the right, stop cars on the left, other things could be going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He probably doesn't have FSD on it because he's got a brand new license plate. <laughs> <laughs> that one might be. <laughs> yeah, the lane center, it, it definitely fights for lane center a little bit more than I think Tesla right. does. Yeah. Tesla seems pretty rock solid uh -huh. unless it's going around something. This is kind of... Yeah, it does, the wheel does seem to be a bit jerkier. I don't know why. 
What's it say on this? The Waymo driver is in control at all times. Yeah. <laughs> Please keep your hands off the wheel. <laughs> Please keep your hands off the wheel. There's a sticker on there that says that. Because if you move the wheel, it'll actually move the car. Yeah. So it's kind of risky that they're even letting you sit in the front seat. You know, someone who wanted to cause some bad PR for them could just pull it and, yeah. you know, cause a crash. I mean, it really didn't give me any rules on the screen other than fasten your seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, the user interface is just beautifully simple. You know, we talked about how with autopilot, you have to be the pilot. You have to be thinking about what it's doing because it's so unstructured. Right. It can go anywhere. Here, it's just like, get in, put your seatbelt on and hit start. And that's it. Yeah. It'll do what it needs to do. And I think that's really, you know, the future is the user interface just being so simple. Even a child can use it. Yeah. Get in, you say, take me here. It takes you there. End of story. You know, so I do have some buttons on here, though. I mean, play music. Yeah, I guess I can tap that. Yeah. Don't play any music. I'm going to upload this to you, too. Yeah, that's right. We will play them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good call but that is a good thing cruise yeah. has much worse media options menu okay so I temperature can, temperature and i got these dials and down notice here. how they've actually redone the whole ui for the car yeah which is kind of cool camera privacy cameras on mics off until needed okay so they're recording us they're yeah. all, they're out at google watching us oh look yeah. oh, chuck cook's <laughs> in the car map view that's where we started music temperature can go up and down about this car License weirdly sitting in this seat over here uh -huh. i keep feeling like i'm gonna get a nag <laughs> <laughs> because i'm not looking at the road <laughs> while the car is driving yeah no nags this yeah. is the future yeah there's a classic San Francisco street going yeah. up a hill like that. <laughs> All right, so made that turn very, very There's smoothly. A classic VW yeah, bus. Yeah, old school. <laughs> that lane change was really good too. I, you know, it's good. It feels like FSD's kind of lane change behavior. Yeah. It, it, it's patient, uh, a little jerky. We agree on that. Um, but it's it, good. It, it's good. And it needs to go straight here. I mean, this is the heart of San Francisco. You know, you've got every kind of challenge, and it's not an issue. Here we are driving through Chinatown. There's a ton of people walking. Yeah, now see how these cars, it's giving them a little room there. Yeah. I felt that come over. So it's definitely. Yeah, moved over for the Model X. Yeah. Taking a right here at this intersection. I, um,. I feel like I want more of a map view than the next turn. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I, I know it's five minutes. No, I, I totally agree. It doesn't let you really see more of the map, just kind of what's right ahead of you. Yeah. I really want to see, like, the triple. Overview. Does your phone have the whole overview? So you could, like, in, yeah. like in the app, you could probably look at it like in an Uber, I bet. Yeah. The app is just like the Uber app, you know. Pretty yeah. much every functionality the Uber app has, they've implemented. All right, too. so we got pedestrians. It's Tons got its blinker on. And oh, a stop truck. Oh, and a stop truck. <laughs> Did you hear that? Waiting for intersection yep. to clear. But it's not going to wait. That's another thing. Look Tesla, at that. That's impressive. That's another thing Tesla could learn too. Is just the little voice yeah. explanations of what it's doing. That would give that gives people so much more. So, you know, I think clarity. That was smoother than the Tesla would have done that. The Tesla would have probably could have done it. Might have folded its mirrors, but it would have been much more cautious. I think going into that gap what do you think do you think tesla would have gone straight through that i think i think the tesla could have done it too but i agree it was very smooth and impressive it could tesla and totally could have done it i felt like it I, was I'm just not, it's it's you know i wouldn't bet on the tesla being able to do it yeah you know but it was impressive it was smooth i couldn't have done it better myself to be honest i i'm just in my head thinking does does that level of precision or certainty come from some of these other sensors that it has and it's just like well it didn't even blink because it knew exactly how many centimeters it is whereas vision mm -hmm. vision has a probability to it that you can see when you like when i was watching your car the mm -hmm. the wave of the tesla vision measurements right. happening um but the confidence goes up as, as it approaches yeah i mean in my experience driving with hardware three 
it can do some of those insane precision Three maneuvers too. To so I'm sure LiDAR does have some benefit, but yeah. even with the vision system, it can pull off some of these crazy urban moves too. Yeah. Right, so look at this yeah. guy Jay out into there. the street. Didn't even, it just slowed. Yeah. And it, not too abruptly, just perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely- and see, there's another Waymo. They're all over the city, driverless. Where's the other Waymo? It, it, it just passed oh, in front did. of us. I definitely wasn't making a case that you need LiDAR. I was just trying to say, why did it feel smoother in that exact situation? It could have just been software um, going through that tiny little gap. And it even said it was going to wait, but it didn't. Didn't it say it said like waiting? Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for intersection to clear. I mean, to be honest, 11472 on hardware three. Yeah. Damn smooth too. Hey, look, another Waymo driverless. <laughs> so there's like all kinds of Waymos. This is like, you know, when I talk yeah. to people on X and stuff, and they're like, well, when driverless happens, it's like, driverless it's, has happened here. Yeah. I mean, it's not everywhere, of course. I know yeah. in San Francisco, it's different. Um, maybe the voice command turned it off or something. There you go, going yeah. around a stop car. But yeah, you know, people say, oh, when driverless is here, but I'm yeah. using it all the time, day and yeah. night. In my car, I have FSD. I'm barely using any human driving anymore. Is this plugged down? Yeah. Uh, it's not getting juice, that's what it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe uh, Waymo's not giving you the power. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, I'm still at like 20%. I think we're gonna make this. Well, then we gotta go back to. Yeah. This is. Um, I can give you some uh, power from my phone. Yeah, my cool. iPhone has USB-C. It can charge your I've camera. Got, I've got that battery in my pocket too. <laughs> in three minutes, and I. Speeding on Lombard Street. Oh, we're getting Lombard Street, are we? Oh no, I don't think so. Oh, that dude. would be something. Uh, <laughs> I should try and get it to go what, down there. What actually. did it just say? I mean, I thought well, it just... Lombard Street is a big street. Oh, okay. It's not just it's that just, one part. Okay, yeah. But if we continue going that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a good test. I, I haven't tried it since they expanded the service area. That would, that would be a good test. I bet it, I mean, these guys have been at it for 14 years. Yeah. Like, this thing, you know, and Cruise is just a different experience. It's a lot sketchier. Yeah. But Waymo, you know, it just does it. Extremely Almost challenging there. scenarios. Like it's nothing. Almost there. So we told it to come here. Just use the app. And then you told it to go to another destination, right? So is it going to keep going, or what did you tell it? Didn't you do like it was just point to point, or did you do three points? Yeah, I did it. Uh, I did um, come here to the top yep. of this tower, and yeah. then take us back. So what's it going to do? Is it going to just switch modes and say, "Are you ready to go?" It said we may switch cars. Oh. 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 <laughs> See, there you go. Real city driving. Wow. Why the hell are they sending buses up here? I don't know. But, I mean, I guess this is a tourist spot. That was kind of crazy with the rocks. <laughs> Pedestrian coming out. You see, she's... Yeah, you can take a picture. She just asked if she could take a picture of us uh, while she stands in front of the car so we're not going anywhere. <laughs> you, you get that a lot. People, you know, tourists and stuff especially, they do look. They, you know, they want to take a picture. Yeah. They point, they go, look, no driver. <laughs> no driver. Yeah, so it really is. We're know. definitely getting a lot of looks. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I think this is a stop, and then we can get out and then continue, but I'll just tell it to continue. Yeah. Look to your right. Uh, there's the oh, Bay Bridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look nice that. view. That's awesome. Well, interesting, it didn't use look a at spot. The whole, look at the whole roundabout. See, this is really what um, yeah. Please make sure it's clear before what, exiting. what sets them apart ride, is their HD map. The and it's it's not even like uh, the visualization. Yeah. It's just the map. You know, see, it's not even coming from the perception system. It just knows what everything looks like. That so I think cool. that's really what sets them apart that and what allows just... them to do this. Oh, I didn't tell it to resume. Did I you did. Do... Oh, you did on the app. Yeah. Cool. So here we go, we got a roundabout. If you could even call it that, it's more just like a circle. The 
Bay Bridge, the San Francisco Bay. All right, so now we're going down this hill. We got 11 minutes, and this was a, it's kind of a blind curve here, but it's, oh, it's slowing for a stop sign before I saw it, so it had that on map data, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. FSD always misses the stop sign. Does it? Mm. It's, it's handled in the past, but in the past couple of versions, it has an issue with the stop sign. There's the Golden Gate Bridge. Awesome view. In San Francisco. It's so funny. You got all these views and I'm focusing on the car, but yeah. I guess I don't know which is more important. This is the one I've never seen before. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a blind curve here again. It's going cautious and the, and the shrubs are kind of in the road. It, I heard a blinker, so it had a... Yeah. It, just like the Tesla does on these curves. That's interesting. There is a lot of similarities between yeah. how the Tesla drives and how it drives. Yeah, that was interesting, you know, how it did We're that. On Lombard Street. So here's a pedestrian. Looks like someone standing on the side of their car. It offsets. Gave him slows plenty down. of room. Slowed down. Just like a Tesla would. Very good. Yeah. It, we're ba it's basically a scaling problem now. Scaling self-driving. Yeah. I, I think that the Tesla could do I, I, everything that we've seen it do. I mean, I some of the decisions on the smoothness of some of those tight yeah. gaps, it might have done it differently. Yeah. But I don't see any difference right now Yeah. of anything that this thing was like, oh yeah, it's got this. I agree. And this pedestrian here is watching us. He's like, he's had, there's a little standoff between the <laughs> exactly. car and the guy. He <laughs> keeps taking a step and the car keeps taking a step. That was classic. And, yeah. and But a lot of people have said that's going to be a thing, right? Yeah. You know, you jump in front of these cars to tease them. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Was really good, good VRU handling of the yeah. biker there. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it would be possible to actually build a general purpose system that works a lot like this and uh, doesn't have any boundaries. Yeah. Well, see, well, I don't have any way to realize how much of HD maps is making it feel like the Tesla when it's on vision. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what to give credit to. Is it mm -hmm. lane placement on HD maps or is yeah. it... You know, I mean, we'd it? really have to try it without HD maps to know, but yeah, I think the HD maps definitely help a lot. Uh, it's it's just what eliminates a lot of these sort of issues and uncertainties, and it just knows to go around the things that it can't do well. Right. And like just picking a path, picking a path you can do makes such a difference. So there's a lot of shortcuts that you realize when you actually see how one of these self-driving systems works in practice right like for example sometimes it when it gets stuck you'll just see hey i'm phoning home to ask for help and they just go out to the call center and the call center can say okay change lane to the left do whatever yeah and then the car continues on and that's really all you need you don't need a human driver you just need maybe you know someone who can help in certain situations but you know most of the things it's just gonna figure out itself the 3D assets are definitely oversimplified. Yeah, just <laughs> little circles. Everything's pucks or squares yeah. uh, moving. Right. They're not going for realism. Yeah. Look at the, the tentacle here. I called it a tentacle, but it's doing the same sort of decision on how to take this yeah, path, the path that I wouldn't have expected if it had HD maps to do the path. Now this isn't... Well, if you notice the, the road oh. edges... Okay, look at this. This is a forward-facing, yep. unprotected, and look at it it had it didn't have the right of way over that white car yeah because that white car but was, it knew it, it could have blocked the intersection yeah I think. that was really was natural that was, it was really exactly good. what i would have done yeah wow so i just want to say a big thanks to waymo for giving me access it's not available to everybody do you have any idea how many people have access to it? 
probably several thousand people. A few thousand, at least. Um, did but, you, did, I mean, did, oh. okay, what's it doing? Oh, it got a red light after it was in the intersection, but we're not yeah. quite in the intersection. It's a little bit into the intersection, but cars still have room to go. That's not too much of an issue. That was interesting though, but I, yeah. The hard braking was a little interesting, but yeah. I, I think it did the right thing. Yeah. You know, you, that's going to happen. It's not going to be perfect. Yeah. But I, what I've realized is the key is air correction. Wait Errors may inevitably see. happen yeah. because of the limitations of the software. But if you can identify and correct them quickly, then it's okay. Yeah. So what was required to get access to Waymo? Is it like a waiting list kind of a scenario? Or yeah, is it, it was yeah. a waiting list. Um, you know, someone actually just DM'd me on Twitter at one point and said, okay, we're going to give you access for two weeks. Waiting okay. For and so they gave me access for two weeks and they took it away. Mm -hmm. Then I came off the wait list. So I don't know if it's because, oh, okay. you know, you might have gotten an accelerated you know, wait list. or something. Yeah. But whatever the reason is, I'm thankful. Lots of pedestrians here. Yeah, no, this is amazing. Yeah, it's, you know, it has its limitations, of course, with picking us up and all that, but it's a major engineering achievement. And it does make me excited. It makes me say, this is actually possible. Well, what I'm most excited about is they've got regulatory approval to yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, which, which really makes me think a lot more about what we can do in a small scale to... Oh yeah. To perfect it, I, just like we've talked about on several different scenarios, we know Tesla. Hey, look got, at this. We so got the bus we got is a, going over the line a little. And, bit. and there was a Tesla. Look at that. So the right, bus. So, is, okay, the bus is just committed. This, and this is a. Oof. Oh, okay, baby. we need to stop. Oh baby. <laughs> this is. Oh, oh my god. And the car is. Oh. And we. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> the car is still proceeding with confidence, slowly. It didn't hit anything. <laughs> Oh my god! Right, it's good. That was really good. I, it, I mean, it could have stopped, but overall, I, you know, I give theoretically it a it should have stopped sooner yeah. as it saw that bus trying to go by. Right. I give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, I, you know, I couldn't have asked for anything more. The bus driver was probably annoyed. Yeah, that the car. He's took like, oh god, one of these driverless cars again. <laughs> I'm sure all the time, as if being a bus driver in this crazy city wasn't bad enough. Now they add driverless cars into the mix. <laughs> you know, can you imagine? I cannot even imagine. But, but yeah, I, you know, I think the regulators at the end of the day, if the technology works and if it's safe, yeah. they're not going to stand in the way. And I think they've done a good job at managing the risks and yeah. putting out something good here. Do you think there's any chance that any of these scenarios have had human intervention? Would we know? Yeah, it, it tells you. Okay. So it's very obvious. It'll okay. stop and it'll display a message on the screen. Uh, that, that somebody remotely is controlling it? Okay. Yeah. So uh, as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any remote uh, input or help. The confidence in that last maneuver and with the way it went around that other one, both felt... I think LiDAR... ...more aggressive than Tesla. I felt Tesla would have wait, just waited. It had just stopped and waited. Which is just a good an answer, but I, it, it, I think LiDAR, you, you know, in yeah. a situation like that, where they can have to the centimeter, the millimeter level, yeah. exactly how far they are, that's going to give them a lot of confidence. Yeah. Versus to train a vision-based system that to do that, you really need a ton of data of yeah. that kind of, you know, thing. And it's... You know, the margin of error is just going to be greater than LiDAR, obviously. You know, when I do my narrow roads test, and I, it still struggles with oncoming cars when there's plenty of room. So when I watch that bus go by, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like my narrow road scenario. And right. But I, I just think the Tesla has a bigger buffer it needs yeah. before it decides, I'm just going that's to stop right. and let this happen and let, let them go around yeah. me now. And I think that's just this, it's that, just like when we went around that truck. Right. It just needed a little bit of confidence to say, no, you can you can use up the buffer, but I can't use up the buffer right now. I mean, I think they've kind of basically just put a, a greater margin of safety in the planning and control area yeah. because they know there's that uncertainty, especially when you have people using it all across the continent. Right. There's going to be a greater 
you know, sort of margin there. Okay, so we got two trolley cars and we're taking a left. Yeah. What happens here? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this this situation exactly. This is a very San Francisco situation. Two I, cable cars. Is there some law about tra cable cars affect the lights, or do they honor the lights just like the cars do? Do you know? You know. Okay, uh, so look, so he's going as if the oh, light. Okay, this he's going that way. Which is the same way we're going. Yeah, so this will be interesting. Oh. Okay. You know, and the, the cable cars are basically just here for tourists. Nobody actually takes them. It's just sort of like a historical anachronism. And everybody's laughing at it. We got we got more people taking pictures of us. So we got a trolley car there. Yeah. We got people taking picture of the driverless car. We have a green. It's unprotected left. But that car is blocking yeah, the intersection, the so it's waiting on the car. Waiting, waiting for, for the intersection. intersection. Okay, so it's waiting on this truck, even though it's got a green light. Come on. Let's but, go. And now it's really yellow oh, again. Oh, it's stuck and it's blocking a little bit. Oh, but oh, it. No. Oh! It committed! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> was that a red light? <laughs> but but that time it went through the red because it was knew it knew it was in the intersection. I, I mean, it's it's kind of the human thing to do, honestly. That's probably what I would have done. As the trolley was coming towards yeah. us. <laughs> oh my god! That was like a little bit of an action move, you know. Like a roller coaster sometimes. Impressive. Yeah, it, I, that was fun. <laughs> and you know the fact that we haven't crashed into anything just makes it that much more impressive. <laughs> there have been some moments where I've been like, uh. <laughs> I mean, this, this is some challenging stuff we've thrown at it. I cannot believe that it uh, had its own trolley problem there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what's interesting is. Uh, we have more driverless cars than cable cars now in San Francisco. That, yeah. We're a city that's known for our cable cars, but there's tons of driverless cars here too. It's kind of interesting, like yeah. the pre-car technology and the post-car technology right. existing at one time in this city. Will they still have those cable cars running when driverless cars are 90% of the cars on the road? I, I mean, don't know. The, the cable cars are obviously nostalgic for tourists, exactly. that's for sure. Yeah. That's probably the only reason they're still here. <laughs> right. But it definitely is an interesting driving problem. Um, but when you think of the infrastructure to make it work with these wires, and yeah, that's got to be expensive too. Yeah, it's actually interesting. Um, the cable cars don't have any propulsion on the car itself. There's actually just these cables that run underneath the city. Yeah. And they just latch onto the cable, and all the cars get pulled. Wow. Then the other thing they do is they've got the electric wires that go overhead. Yeah. And the buses just connect to them. They don't have any uh, combustion. So they just run off the electric wire. Wow. Long before there were BEVs or batteries, they just said, hey, let's electric's, just run wires overhead. Electric's the way to go. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, were, they were pioneers early on for yeah. electric. They said, hey, you know, cars are really um, dirty. Let's try this. Actually, someone hooked up their Prius to run off those wires. That's pretty funny. <laughs> well, this has... This is a challenging scenario. It says cable car cross traffic. Okay. So oh, God. Blinking oh, red oh, light. Oh, it's flashing red. I was thinking it's going through red, but that was a, that was a four-way <laughs> yeah, red. Yeah, it was a flashing red. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. It feels like it's downshifting almost. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit unsure about the Pedestrian cable car path there. Yeah. Almost there. Don't forget your belongings. So you think that was uncertainty due to those little poles over there for the cable car path? I think, yeah. it, you know, it's just not wanting to hit the cones and that kind of thing. Yeah. I thought it was just the downslope. You don't think it was that. You think it was the... Uh, it was. I think it was a little bit yeah. of both. Yeah. So we had FSD Beta take us from the airport to here zero takeovers, one accelerator push lane change with the truck. Yep. And then we had Waymo run through an obstacle course. Oh my gosh. Driverless. Yeah. Driverless. So, it's been quite the autonomy day. Holy smokes. The, yeah. And we played Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> in the car. The state of <laughs> self-driving in 2023 is uh, looking pretty good, I think. Yeah, this has been... The, the the driverless Waymo is fascinating just because I I really wanted to feel 
yeah. the differences with HD maps and LiDAR and, and what that contributed. And, and I honestly can't say it contributed a whole lot right. other than a little bit of confidence in very tight scenarios that I felt the Tesla would have just waited for, for more room to, right. to happen. That was the only difference I, I noticed. Yeah. I, the arcs maybe mm -hmm. were a little smoother on some of the really um, uh, large turn radiuses. It, they, I think it's generally just it. sort of more refined and more geared towards this area. Yeah. But really, like, I had the same thought too the first time I took a Waymo in uh, several years ago. The first time I did, I said, well, I wonder if it's just going to be so much better. And it's going to be so apparent with the LiDAR and HD maps that, oh, okay, yeah. this is really a leap ahead. Oh, but, this is where it's going to pull over? Oh, yeah, on I guess hill? so. But, it, you know, it really is pretty similar yeah, yeah. to what you experience in... What do you think? Pilot. We're here. We yeah. did it. Good job, Waymo. I, I, give it a, I give it a 10 out of 10. I do, too. We got yeah. here safe and sound and got to see it all. Hope you guys enjoyed that.